All right, good. Welcome back, everybody, to the Real Estate of Mind show. We're your hosts, Glenn and Amber Schwarm. Hello, everybody. Well, we help everyday people create wealth through real estate investing. Today, we have an awesome couple on here from L.A. Power couple. Power couple, for sure. <laughs> and we're excited to have them join us here today. And uh, they are the authors of the book, The Game, Win Your Life in 90 Days. They've been on multiple television shows, including Good Morning America, Fox Business. They're currently on PBS, rated number one by the Warden School of Business SIA program. So we're honored to have them here. We have Serrano and Brooke Kelly. Welcome, guys. Thank you so much. And the honor is all ours. It's Definitely. really great to be able to connect with you guys. Yeah. Yeah. Tell tell our listeners a little about you guys. Give us some back give us some backstory. Well what do you, um, you do all that? I'll, I'll, I'll brag about my wife, which she hates. Um, so uh, she started off early in life training for the Olympics at a very, very high level, you know, training like six hours a day, starting at like five years old. Oh, wow. Mm. Ultimately ended up um, in her career. Well, she stopped her Olympic career because uh, sadly her grandmother was dealing with the uh, last days of her life. Aww. And she decided that that was how she wanted to spend her time. So she gave her Olympic dreams, took care of her grandma, saw her through that transition, went to Pepperdine University and ended up joining Pfizer Pharmaceutical. And out of 8,000 salespeople in the world for the number one company, she was number 10 on the planet. Uh, she, she unfortunately uh, hates when I brag about her. Way to go, Brooke. No way. Way to go, girl. Way to go. And, and she's got a big heart. She took care of her grandma. Exactly. And, you know, it was interesting that uh, when we met, immediately there was this magnetism to uh, the work that I was doing that she herself had been living, which is exemplified in our process, our book called The Game, When Your Life in 90 Days which basically shows people how to achieve peak performance at anything. And we were so excited to hear that part of what you guys do is you address people's mindset mm -hmm. and that part of what you're helping people to recognize is the power of mindset combined with mechanics to achieve peak performance. So uh, it felt like such a fit. So uh, yeah. is it okay that I told them all that? I may pay for this later. <laughs> no, for no, no, no. <laughs> Serrano, listen, I'm married too, so you will pay for it later. That's <laughs> Yourself, I, I might pay for this later. You're going to pay. <laughs> exactly. I would also add that we were really excited to be here. Um, one of the things that I really admire about both of you is your story um, and, and what you've built um, truly from the ground up and also just how authentic you are about the way that you've built that and um, making it accessible to, to everyone. Mm -hmm. I think that um, you, it, it's, you know, it's a great tagline, but it doesn't feel like a tagline. And so there was a real interest in having this conversation with you because of that. Oh, thank you, Brooke. Oh, well, thank you. You know what I think? I, mm. I do want to dive into the book here in a minute, but I, I, I don't even know what you're going to say, but I, I love the aspect of, you know, win at life in 90 days, because I think sometimes we get so in our head about thinking that things just have to be way harder than they really need to be and like 90 days. You can accomplish a lot in 90 days if you're like really focused at it and, mm -hmm. and like getting that head trash out of the way and you have to do this grind and that everything has to be hard and long and drawn out for it to be like fulfilling or productive even. So that's so, the way my life has felt. I know that. <laughs> so, yeah. I look right, forward to learning about 90 to be, days. Like, sometimes when you know, when you, you know, it's like nobody ran the four minute mile until they knew somebody could run the four minute mile. So like, you know, if you can like lay that, lay that groundwork out. Roger you know, Bannister. People, in case you're wondering what the name is. People can, uh, <laughs> yeah, it doesn't have to be as hard as I'm making it to be in my head. Right. Yeah. What and, was the inspiration? Oh, go, go ahead, Sarah. I was just going to say, you know, sometimes when people want to make a critical change, they feel like I'm going to make this change for the rest of my life, right? right? And it's just like, oh my God, it's so overwhelming. That it's kind of hard to even want to get started. Whereas when we go, hey, like just 90 days, they're like, well, I can, I can, I can, I can do that for 90 days, right? Yeah. So it, you're, you're right, it's so much more approachable and it's so much easier for people to make change when they really do take it one step at a time. Right, size pieces. Serrano, what was your background? We heard about Brooke and how awesome she is. I want to hear about you. Yeah. I don't uh, care if Brooke does or you do it, but I want to hear about you. <laughs> well, you know, sometimes people think because of my wife's background that she was born with a silver spoon in her life. But really, we grew up in very similar circumstances. In my case, I grew up in the same neighborhood as Mike Tyson. 
It had the highest murder rate in the country. So by 16, when I entered Vassar College, most of my friends, 50% of them, uh, tragically never lived to see 16. It was really that bad. Uh, I went to college at 16. Uh, I landed on Wall Street at age 20. And I was a kind of wonder kid on Wall Street because by 23, uh, I was already earning almost a half a million dollars, uh, you know, just basically as a stockbroker. When tragically, at the end of my first year, I had four children in my extended family who tragically died in a house fire. Oh. And it was at their funeral that I really asked myself honestly, well, well, like, what is my purpose? What is my passion in life? And I had to realize or recognize that what I love is helping people to achieve their full potential. Uh, that's really the theme of our work, is the theme of our book. And uh, I feel like that's the theme of what you all do, is you get people to see that there's untapped potential, untapped opportunity in real estate, and that when they merge those two things together, they're able to achieve results beyond their wildest dreams, which, yeah. um, you know, we've gone on to be media skills coaches to the White House, to be rated number one as speakers and coaches. We've had several television shows made about our work. Is used by the NFL, is used by major firms on Wall Street. And, um, you know, it really also uh, unexpectedly is about life balance. So it's really not about the maniacal pursuit of one goal. It's about how do you achieve success across all the areas of life that are important to you. You guys both exemplify, you know, our tagline of real estate of mind. You both, you both exemplify that knowing Toronto, that I appreciate you sharing that. That's intense. I mean, you got me kind of emotional. That's a that's intense story. And then you've come out of a something that I can't. You know, I, I was born up, you know, pretty poor, but in the country of New York, it, it's not not like you. You know, certainly it sounds like it was even tougher where you were. I mean, I, I didn't lose half my friends. That's that's a big. That's big. That's that's you. You're you had to have had a strong mindset. You know, mm-hmm. doing this and Brooke, you being a you know Olympic. What what sport were you Olympic athlete in? Or almost- junior Olympic. He uh, so I trained for the Olympics. I was a junior Olympic swimmer. I was a swimmer. Swimmer. And, okay. Yeah. And um, mm-hmm. I would say that one of the things that I found so touching about Serrano and the game and the birth of the game was that as he lost those family members and dealt with how am I going to put my life back together, he went from you know he doesn't often speak about this, but he went from working at Lehman Brothers to moving furniture because the emotional pain was so tough that he had to exert physical pain to exceed that, right? And he has always, when, when you look at like his life, he, he gamified pain. Um, he, he took it and he, he was unwilling to not feel it, but stay in it. And he has this really unique ability to take anything a person wants to achieve regardless of their current circumstances and help them to see incrementally through micro steps how to achieve. But because of the results that get produced, it always gets sort of, you know, promoted as what happens for big firms. And, but we've had people, um, we've had husbands play games to uh, give their wives who've lost children, healthy pregnancies. We had a gentlemen play the game and gamify his medicine and his rest and his chemotherapy and time with kids because he knew he had 90 days. So I feel like the birth of the game came out of Serrano's pain and how he decided to turn that into something that he could give to others. And um, when I met him, we met at church and he was going to raise money for our church using the game. That was how we met. And that was the birth of um, the game with us together. I was so moved by somebody who would do all of that. And so we have a question for the two of you, which is, where do you, where, where do you feel that the folks that are, are listening now in your experience, where do you feel they most get stuck? Like, where do they find themselves challenged with executing the clearly successful game plan that you guys have created and you are evidence of? We're just curious, like, where do you find that people mostly get stuck? What's in the way of them moving forward yeah. and taking yeah. the action that you know to be yeah. successful? Yeah. What, Without, it, without question, it's fear. It, and it's fear of mm. different things, though, because we all have our own version of head track. And I and Serrano, I just want to say that, like, your story is such an inspiration to yes. people of of just, you know, overcoming and like like putting the excuses aside, because we all, you know, everybody's got their own story and their own version of what happened to them and how it affected them. Mm-hmm. But you came from, you know, a really tough area and had to endure some really tough pain. And, you know, some people 
Brooke, like you just said, they live there. They live in that pain and they get stuck there and aren't Forever. able to move forward. Forever. And and you just kind of like put all of those excuses out of the way and don't let anything hold you down. And so many people do let excuses hold them back. And so when we talk about fear, you know, it could be fear of failure. It could be fear of success. You know, if I become successful, you know, the my, my friends aren't going to like me anymore. Uh, you know, it's fear of losing money, fear it's fear of making the wrong decision, yeah. fear of being embarrassed, all that fear, stuff. Fear of change. I want to I want to dive into that real quick and I want to get back to your question. But before I jump, I want to say that I'm so looking forward to diving into this, talking about the game, because you're authentic. Like there's not, you know, there's nothing worse than have somebody write a book about something they have no idea what they're talking about, right? Or they really haven't been through it. And so we we're big believers when you come to our workshop, you know, I share this a lot in my workshops is that I've been, you know, in my early days, I'm 52 now, but when I was, you know, in my 20s, I went bankrupt three times. I had two foreclosures. I lost a car repossession. I'd been uh-huh. trying to stand in the welfare line and get and get uh-huh. my power turned back on. So when somebody says to me, you don't know what it's like, I'm like, bullshit. I don't know what it's like. I know exactly yeah. what it's like. I've been stood in that line. I've yeah. been there. So, you know, I've been to those places where people don't understand that I've been there. So I think that talking to somebody right now, I feel a connection with you because you, we get the grind in different ways, but we get the yeah. grind. Look through you being being a junior. I don't care what it is, any kind of Olympic. I don't care what level it's at. You, that's that, that the, the dedication, the grind to get there. That's it's grind, and that's what it's about. So so, mad respect to both of you, just so you know. So that's that's awesome. That. that helps me to understand the game, and our listeners to say now. Now I want to hear what they have to say. They didn't just write a book. About it. They, yeah, well, you know, my daddy gave me money, and it was really tough because I had to pay him back after three billion. <laughs> Nobody cares about that, right? They want to hear how they built it. So. With, with our students, going back to your question, with our students, without question, what Amber said, it's fear. I think that's what really holds them back because we, we provide them at our workshops. We show them how to get the money. We show them how to find the deals. We show them all those steps, but mm-hmm. you've got to take the step. you got to take action. I always tell people, I say, listen, we're going to coach you. I say, we are going to, if you walk, we're going to walk. If you run, we're going to run. If you sprint, we'll sprint with you. I say, but you will not outrun me. And if you do, I'll be your biggest cheerleader. I said, but we're there. I said, but we're there for you, but you've got to go with that mental mindset. So that's why we provide our long-term students that um, a peak performance coach, because we yeah. believe that's the biggest thing. I guess why we have such a high success rate is that people were able to help them overcome that. And that it's, it's not about, it's not about the mechanics. I mean, honestly, it's, we buy low, we sell high. We, it's not, it's not that. It's, it's, it's not about how to hang a countertop. It's about how do you, we are all where we are in our life at any given moment because of what is right between our two ears. You know, that's the most expensive real estate you're ever going to own. Absolutely. Yeah. And that is what's either going to make you successful or what makes you live in that place that you don't want to live in. Yeah. So if you can help people get out of their own way, that's like the biggest gift I think you can give someone. Yeah. And it sounds like that book is exactly what this is so about. So I want to hear us yeah. about that. So you asked what the Definitely. question was. We answered it for 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> you have the floor, well, Toronto. Well, I, I would say your message was incredibly clear. It wasn't many as it was one. Fear, right? Yeah. And, you know, I don't want people to think that any of us here would minimize a person's fears because right. we've all had them. We've all right. been through them. But I want you to imagine um, you know, when people go through our process, part of what they do is they, they they write a very detailed game plan following a format that we've given them. This has been used by millions of people very successfully, right? And so when they first write this game plan, there's not, there's maybe a little fear, but it's like, well, I'm just writing this down, you know, I've, I've done that before and said I would do these things. And But what happens is there's a point in the process where we have what we call a fan spot. Mm-hmm. And we're very good at convincing people to do this. We convince them it's a really good idea to take this written plan and to invite to a kickoff call all the people in life that they would least want to let down. Mm-hmm. Right? So well, they could be related to business. They could maybe not. Their personal life, business life. It's anyone that you love and respect so much mm-hmm. that you know if you failed at this, you couldn't even bear to see them. It's it's like saying, I would never fail if that person knew. That's who you bring. Wow. Okay. And of course, like anyone else, when they get on the phone or over Zoom or whatever the medium is, right, and they're reading from this format and they're committing to over the next 90 days, I'm going to do this, and over the next 90 days, I'm going to do that, right? And it all seems like fun and games because, you know, it is a game. Mm-hmm. But the moment that call is over, all of a sudden what they realize is, Wow, I've really got to do this. They made it they're screwed. 
you're accountable now. <laughs> yeah, you're completely yeah. boxed in, right? Which is what most people need, right? It's, it's 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 no different, right? It's like yes, there are the fears, but the moment you you take that plunge, and once you're in, you're just in. Right. I always tell people you never fail when failure is not an option. What if we remove that as an option? Mm -hmm. And so as simple as it is, when we have that kickoff call, we even tell people's fans, hey, we're pre-inviting you to come back at the end of 90 days because we're that confident that this person will succeed, that you will succeed. And at the end of 90 days, I'm proud to say it's amazing to see the way that people show up. And I think that all of us have our own way of relating to that because for us, you know, failure was not an option. Mm -hmm. The same way that from hearing your stories, it really wasn't an option for you. You had to succeed. So you made it happen. Mm -hmm. Does that feel familiar when I say that to the two of you? Does that feel good for you and your experience? Yeah, 100 percent. Yeah, we we believe strongly that the only way you fail in life is to quit, right? That people say, "Well, how, how have you gotten where you where you're at?" And in my mind, I don't think I've gotten that far. I know people, other people see it and think we have. I just you probably feel the same way. I just I don't I don't know. I'm still moving, right? I'm still growing. I'm still doing my stuff. But I I see the, the only reason I'm farther ahead than you is I failed more than you. That's I, it. I, you know? I'm actually listening to a book right now on Audible. Um, what's the author's name? But the, I, the, his name. The, the book is called Unf Yourself, <laughs> and mm. and the uh, there was a there was a a chapter that I was just listening to, and it said if you're failing, you, so the mind is hardwired to win no matter what. So if you're failing, you're still winning because failing is what's in your mind. So mm. by by committing, you know, doing this call and like committing yourself to all of these people that you love and respect and care about and don't want to let down, you're automatically like rehardwiring your brain to win, not fail. Mm. It's an interesting thought. That's brilliant. I was thinking while you were talking to my, I had lunch with my son, my 21 year old son yesterday, and he works for our companies uh, in two different companies, our coaching company, and um, he also helped manage our Airbnbs and our short term rental portfolio, and. You know, we he his passion though I found through having this conversation. He's my first adult child that I that I have, and so I'm um, as we're talking. His passion. He's into the all the cryptocurrency stuff. He is just all in. I am completely confused by it. Like I don't. I'm like I don't even know. Is that real? Is that like a Bernie Madoff kind of thing? What is that thing? You know, I don't even understand. And, and who knows? I don't even know what it is. But but he is into it. And I found out through talking to him. I just sat and asked a lot of questions and listened to him. Mm-hmm. And I discovered his passion. And I, and I, I never, I actually called him this morning and said, I had, I said, son, I haven't told you this. I had called him on the way in. I said, hey, pal, I said, I wanted to tell you that I, I appreciate having lunch with you yesterday. I love spending time with you. He said, me too, dad. I said, but I also want to tell you that I, I totally respect that you're doing something that's against the norm, right? Not everybody's into it now. And because he said, dad, I'm doing this. I think I'm in a, in a pioneer thing. And he thinks of it like when Amber and I, and I like, you know, in his mind, you know, we didn't pioneer real estate investing by any, any stretch of imagination, but we did start in a time in 2007, 2008, when everybody was saying, run for the hills, don't do real estate. Yeah. And we sort of pioneered a path to say, when we started, we said, look, we want to do this. We want to show people we can, you can do this within, with honesty, integrity, and character. You can build a real business and do this. And that's what we set out to do back then, never dreaming we'd be where we are today. But one of the things my son said, he said, the reason that I said, do any of your friends, because he's telling me some of his numbers and he's got money invested. He's got, he's got more of a net worth than I had in my forties. He's 20. I'm like, you know, and I'm like, is that real? He's like, well, yeah, some's, some like it, some's liquid, some is, is secondary liquid. He's explaining, I'm like, I don't know what that means, but whatever. And so I'm looking at it and it's all six figures. And I'm like, wow, Coda, really? And so. Aww. I'm. Uh, I actually gave him a peak performance coach. Just so you know, I, I've hired uh, part of my thing for his birthday was I'm going to get you a peak performance coach, and so he, he helped his coach make ten grand or something on the trade. So he's it's really good. Now I point to that as so so as long story, but he said he said my I said <clears throat> why do you think I said your friends are doing it too? He goes yeah. He goes they don't have as much as I do. I said why do you think that you've got so much more than your friends? He said well because I take more risks. And I said. <clears throat> Are you taking crazy risks? He said, no, I'm diversifying my risk. You know, he said, I have some up, some down. I, I'm in some stable things, but I take some higher risk with some smaller numbers. And well, it's good. I, I take more. He studied his craft. Yeah. Right. And he's taking risk and he's got a peak performance coach helping him through all this stuff. So awesome. So I'm just watching my son who's 21. So awesome. You know, and I'm thinking to myself, Gee, maybe he did learn something from us growing up. <laughs> so- <Right? laughs> well, you, know, you know, to Amber's point about fear and head trash. It's like if you take a look at it, you know, like, you know, like with Superman, there's this kryptonite, right? And it's like, you know, well, you could say that with fear and with head trash, 
it's kind of like kryptonite to taking risk. Yeah. Right? What prevents us from taking risk. So not only do we not fail, we don't even try. Mm -hmm. And so we miss the lessons that we would learn, which is typically what we need to succeed, right? In sports, you know, you know, of course, you know, how many times you got to practice something to get it grouped in before you can do it consistently, successfully. And then we get to everyday life and we think, well, I tried once and it didn't work. Right. Right. Once? Right. That's like like a baby learning how to walk. I mean, they they fall and fall and fall and fall over and over and over again. They go, you know, but they keep trying and then they nail it. Yeah. And I will say that out of that, truly great stories are born. You know, I mean, imagine watching a movie where a person was born with a silver spoon in their mouth and everything was handed to them and it was easy. Who would want to watch that movie? I know. I know. How boring, right? Right. The movie that we all enjoy watching is seeing people overcome this incredible adversity, this incredible difficulty. And then we put them on a pedestal. But, you know, as you said, I I still feel like we're like we're failing, like we're growing, that we're still trying, that it's this ongoing process. It's not like there's a point at which you arrive. Uh, I always tell people, you know, people think that the goal in life is to have no problems. And I tell them that I can guarantee them that there will be a point in life that they have no problems because they're dead. <laughs> it's not a problem. But, right? that's, so, that's your last problem. Yeah. yeah. You have so, solved so your life, last problem. <laughs> life is about overcoming those problems. Yeah. You know? Yeah, I think the, I think the more you master that in life, and you know, I, I keep feeling like, you know, people people look at us and think, oh my gosh, you guys have mastered that. And I, I think I'm still in elementary school. I still I'm still in preschool. I'm still trying to figure things out every day. You probably feel the same way. I think the older I get, the dumber I realize I actually am. You know what I mean? So I, I'm like, I don't think I know. I, I don't understand how I, how I made it this far. So it's uh, it's incredible. But no, tell tell us how you you know. So I love that's that's one. What did you call that call? You said kickoff, kick, kickoff call. I thought you called it something else. Don't you call it a kickoff call? We call it a fans call, kickoff call. So it's a fans call on the first call and then the last call. Fans call. Got it. Yeah. What else do you guys do with people when you work with them? And that, cause that, that's an incredible thing. Like that's, a, that's, I can totally see why when you're accountable to your people that are really mean something to you, because if you're around a bunch of strangers, you say, I'm going to lose 90 pounds this year. See you later. Never see them again. But yeah, you have to that? face those people every day. It's just, a, you know, you're, you're, it just, it, it grabs at you like crap. The execution see them again. part of it. Yeah. Yeah. So what else do you help people do? Uh, let me just say one other thing about the fans, if, if you don't mind. It's um, most people, when they set a goal, they are estimating their effort, their mm-hmm. potential, their capacity. And so, you know, what you've achieved in most areas of your life has been some version of that. If you've been fortunate to have a parent that's been behind you or a great coach, you could add their effort to that. But what most people have an experience that the fans call has them experience is being fully surrounded in every aspect of your life, being seen um, by people who just know you in your personal life as the business person you also are. So when you're cutting out of here early, they're not offended. They get it. They, they want to see you win. And what people begin to realize is that they've never communicated to everyone around them what matters the most to them. And what we found is they initially feel like they're inconveniencing these people to bring them. And they end up having their fans call them after in tears or moved and inspired saying, now I'm going to do this. Now I'm going to do that. And so you realize that half of it for them is now they're known. And now those people find ways to make them win. When you choose the right people, they can't hear you and hear that courage and help themselves, but want to contribute. So we found the greatest success stories where their fans like, I didn't know you wanted referrals, man. I didn't know, you you know, wives are now losing weight with their husband because they're just known. So I think that that's another thing that you realize in life is whether it's a team, right? But that most people are trying to go it alone Mm -hmm. and they don't leverage the power of that circle around them. That's really powerful. Yeah. Do you guys agree too that there's something to be said for having someone in your circle around you, near you, um, that has done something at a level that you want to do it at? Because... I don't think you realize what's possible 
I agree. I see somebody else has done it. Sometimes, like there, there's there's always those exceptional visionaries. You got Elon Musk is going to fly to Jupiter or something. Who the hell? Right. Well, that's great, right? Whatever. Like Mars. They're, well, whatever. <laughs> I don't think he's done it. So whatever it is, yeah. So he'll be yeah you know, ice skating on Saturn. I don't know what he's doing. <laughs> there's there's always going to be you know there's always those those exceptional visionaries, but most people, me included. I, you know, just recently I've had my vision expanded by being around people in a mastermind group and I'm in our real estate world and even our coaching world. And I'm all of a sudden my vision has expanded to, wow, this would be a good life to, wow, this would be a good life. Because now I see that, wow, if that person can do it, I can do it, right? There's a lot of power in that. Don't you think there's power in in proximity? I've heard Anthony Robbins say that before. I think it's so powerful. It's, It's what you just said, Brooke, is the same kind of thing where people are looking at their friend and saying, well, if you can do that goal, maybe I can. That's a smaller scale, but they're saying, hey, if you can do that, or that's important to you. That's that's so, I have stuff that's important to me too. So people are using each other for inspiration. You know, you did this, I'm inspired to do something too. But on the same token, <clears throat> they also use it as support. So you're saying, you know, husbands and wives are losing losing weight together. You know, maybe the husband didn't know the wife wanted to lose weight, and every single holiday he brings her this big, huge basket of chocolate. But if he, you know, now he knows how important it is to her that she, you know pour her heart out to this group of fans, yep. he, you know, maybe going to find something else to give her as a gift. He's not going to bring her like a, a weight loss scale well, or something. Well, he can bring her back. <laughs> 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 that would not be a smart move. That would not that. be a smart move. <laughs> uh, honey, I'm trying to support you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Here's a smaller dress, you know, in case you want to uh, so <laughs> I was thinking, so about what, I, I, I think that the most important thing for people to have another person is it gives you courage temporarily. It's like a courage hack, mm-hmm. yeah. right? It's like, yeah, so it does expand your vision. It does have you realize that's possible. Maybe you get some insight for how they did it. And I think that those things, almost to your guys' point earlier, it's like the mechanics. But at least for me personally, when I see those people that I admire, like my mom, she worked two jobs, got two master's degrees, raised two kids largely on her own. So when I think about being married, <laughs> you know, doing things, it, it, it pales in comparison to what she was doing every day in front of me, right? But it's the courage. It's a courage hack is what I feel. And yeah. then there's all these other benefits as well. Rano, you had you said something that was kind of an aha moment to me a minute ago, too. And it was, and I wonder why you think this is. I have my own thoughts on it, but I, I would like to hear from you first. You said, we think we have to go through this independently. Mm. Why do you think, why do you think we have to do that? Mm. Why do you think we have to do things independently just by nature instead of asking for help? I think it's back to your prior comment about fear, fear of other people's judgments, fear of inadequacy, fear of what happens if I fail and other people know, right? So it causes us to do the exact thing that would actually cause us to fail, which is to contract, Mm -hmm. right? Whereas... If I take a look at what you all are doing, if we kind of translate it into our language, we would consider you guys mentors because you've paved the way and you've cut a path for people. You've done it. You've experienced it. You've been through the ups and downs. Then you actually provide people with coaches. Well, a coach is great. They're not a mentor, but they're a coach and they're on the field helping them to deal with their mindset, helping them to deal with mechanics. Then, as we've said, we add to that equation people having fans. In fact, one of the key principles in our process is is that every person has a daily game plan and they have a 10 minute call every day with a daily accountability partner so we were looking at you all thinking wow you know how great it is that you have that partnership it's like Mm -hmm. having a workout partner Mm -hmm. or a swim buddy it's what carries you through day to day and even though in our system it requires nothing more than a 10 minute daily call i would challenge individuals who are potentially stuck or maybe just inconsistent doing what they know they need to do to take on having that sort of peer-to-peer accountability because ultimately we're going to have to face those fears not just once probably every day there's going to be something to push through i also think it's shame i think that people want to get it right and then be seen and and I think that goes back to courage. You know, um, I think it takes so much courage to be seen in the process yeah. before it's all right. And um, you know, I I am an eye daughter and a T crosser myself. But the clients that I really admire 
have built incredible mastermind groups. And I think that that whole concept of mastermind group is like saying, I'm willing to be in a circle of peers and have you see parts of me that I make prettier for the outside world. I'm willing to be challenged by your success as well as inspired. I, I want to do that for you. Um, I, I think that that's the biggest piece is wanting to get it right and then show up. And uh, as opposed, and I get it. Like I said, I'm an eye daughter and a T crosser all the way. But I think my growth right now is watching others that I admire and realize they're willing to collaborate, they're willing to be seen, they're willing to ask, they're willing to do all those things. So to your question, I think it's shame that people feel like they need to go it alone and then they'll partner. I I agree with you a hundred percent. I also think it can, it like as a society, it's, it's, it's like something to be proud of, to be independent and like our children to be independent. So we're actually doing them a disservice in some cases. Mm -hmm. Maybe there's like a balance there that, that needs to happen, you know, cause you know, it, 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 the power of, of, even being able, like you were saying, being in a mastermind and being able to expose those sides of yourself that aren't so pretty and even being able to be wrong yes. and, it, oh. and it be okay instead of, instead of feeling shame because you don't know everything there is to know. Yeah. So, you know, maybe there's something that kind of needs to shift even in, in parenting, for example, I agree. with making, you know, making our children so independent that they're afraid to ever ask for help. And I think part of why we make them independent is because we don't want them to get hurt. Right. right. So like, if you can get it right and then show your classmates, they'll like you and you won't be sad, which means I won't be stressed all day, right? <laughs> it's not even like a selfish thing. It's another self-protective mechanism. I often think I wish I hadn't, I love swimming and I'm forever grateful for all the lessons I learned in the pool. But my favorite times was when I was on the relay with four other girls. I always found my fastest splits because I didn't want to let them down. Right. But I was so used to staring at that black line for hours and thinking of my goals and how I was going to get there that then when it came to business and it was time to partner, I was like, wait a minute, you could mess it up for me. Like, I don't know if I want to let you in, you know? And there was, there was this self being very honest. I am. <laughs> and, and I'm not proud of it. Right. It's, it's uh-huh. something I, because I want to get it right for everyone, mm. but that's so self-absorbed and and so so small and thinking, right? But it's it's a, it's from childhood all the way right. through. One hundred percent. You know, we have this self-preservation mindset. Yes. And this, and the end of mindset to be right all the time. Totally. Yeah. You're not. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> I assumed you were all the time. You tell me you are. So I, so I assumed you, know, you, know, you, know, you, you say all the right things. He does. I think I need to get some- <laughs> I think Amber has done a great job. I actually need to learn from Amber. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm not new here. You know what I mean? I'm not new here. This is not my first rodeo. <laughs> you know, you said, Brooke, I love, I love the, I wrote, I've been taking notes while you guys are talking and um, I love the courage <laughs> hack. Um, I talk about a lot of things that are hacks in my trainings and stuff, but I, I haven't done that one. That's a courage. I, I have some um, other hacks I do to help people overcome, you know, self-limiting beliefs and that kind of stuff. And I give them some hacks on that. Mm-hmm. And so I love that part. I think that um, this is something I, I'm always expressing in our workshops. And that is people think when they meet people that have achieved a certain level of success, that they are fearless. Mm-hmm. I think nothing can be farther from the truth. I think everybody who's achieved anything is fearful, and we still are fearful. I still have fear every day for one thing or the other. Now, I, it may not be the same things that are fearful to other people, but I have fears at my own level. And the only way to overcome our fear is to have courage. I mean, courage moving forward it, with the with fear. That's It's moving forward through the fear. That's what right. courage is to me, right? Courage is moving forward even though you're scared. And I think it's so important that people, because people like you're not as scared as I am. How do you know? Yeah. You, you don't know how scared no, I, I know enough. I just have the courage to push through it. Right. I just had, and as again, like my son, like he's, he's had, the, he's taking courage to take steps where nobody else has taken steps. And so it's paying off for him. So I just, I think that people, I want to get your, your guys' thoughts on that. If you agree, disagree, but I, you know, that, that courage is the, is, you know, working through our fears and that we all have it. And I don't care what level you get to, you guys work with some of the biggest people in the country, bigger than the world. You've had the White House and stuff you see, and I guarantee you've had conversations and there's fear. What I've learned is I don't care if you're a billionaire. I don't care if you're a top parent. I don't care if you're a top athlete. I don't care if you're, it doesn't, money doesn't matter. None of that crap matters. It doesn't matter. It matters. We've all got that stuff. It's just the more successful you get in life in all areas is when you overcome that. Am I, yes, no? I think your mindset coach idea is so brilliant because I think what you guys get at a very deep level is that 
at every level, you're going to, it's going to require new courage. You don't like get it and then it's a static and then it's an IV that just feeds you eternally. Every, you know, and so I always think that a person's business development, like if you could look at their business development pipeline against their self-development pipeline, that these two things are going to always be very, very closely related or ideally your self-development exceeds it, right? Because courage is always going to be necessary and that self-development and that growth is the access to it. Great analogy. Great analogy. It's not like you overcome fear one time and never have it again. No. <laughs> you have to keep overcoming it. That becomes always. a panic. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. as, as people who are out there speaking, a lot of times when we train people to speak, you know, things like when we've done media skills coaching for the White House, stuff like that, people think that we're going to train them to not have fear. What they don't realize is fear is fuel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They don't recognize that, you Channel know, it. Uh, what was there was, I think it was Donna, Donahue back, you know, in the day who would like run around the set before he actually was on just to kind of burn off some of that energy. And then all of a sudden he would appear like cool, calm and collected. But that wasn't the case. Like what was allowing him to be as present was pushing through that fear. And that's what we all need to do just every day. <laughs> but I also think the fear thing goes back to wanting to get it right, right? Mm -hmm. I remember this one time I opened uh, for Serrano at an event we were leading, and he's such a great speaker. And I'm, I'm not. I'm not as polished. It's just that's, that's not my thing, right? So I get up, and I'm telling the story of this man who gave away, and I said I, he gave away his liver to another player. And I'm on the stage, and I said out loud, I don't think you can give away your whole liver, right? Like, and I was like, I was really in this, and then I was like, wait a minute, there are people here, and that that was the moment that they decided that they liked me, right? <laughs> I was in all this fear, right? Because I was like, I got to get this right. I need to be polished. I, I I have to at least, you know, not make him look bad, right? And so I'm like, and then I looked around there laughing. And I was like, you guys liked it, and then I realized like all that fear was actually to get it so right. And that was keeping so much distance between me and the audience. And I'm not saying, you know, fail all the time mm -hmm. in front of everybody, but I'm just saying, I think it's it's some some way that we're also keeping ourselves from other people. And be authentic too, you know? So authentic. I just wish I knew the science behind, well, you can't give your whole liver away, Brooke. It's like <laughs> your whole heart, you're not going to live. Oh, that makes sense. I've had those moments, Brooke, on stage, and you just like, had your own thought going and think, where was I? <laughs> right. You guys all in the room with me because I kind of I had something else going on here, so I know how that goes. But you guys are uh, you guys are great. I spend I spend a good at, at our at our home flipping workshop. I spend on Sunday morning. I spend about an hour, a little over an hour on fear. We've got videos to play. We have a workshop we do, and we really dive into it. And I I go into that. So it sounds like that's a lot of what you help people. Because again, I think you probably find forget real estate anything in life. I bet you fear is probably the one, of, one of, if not the biggest thing. Is that what you guys find? Or do you find something different that holds people back? What do you think? I was going to say, I admire that you guys nailed it at the beginning. When you said it, I thought that is so true. Um, I, I think I'm looking at other symptoms, but I, I have to say when you guys nailed it, especially Amber, there was no hesitation. You were like fear. I was like, that's actually so true. So I wasn't thinking of it that way pre this conversation. But it's almost like talking to a fish about water. Like, yeah, I guess that was fear, right? right? So I would say, I think we spend a lot of time on it without knowing that that's what we're spending a lot of time on. Yeah. Yeah. You. It sounds like you guys give people some um, very practical solutions for for that, right? Whether you call it that or not, that's what you're, that's what you're doing, right? You're helping them get over that, those things. Sounds like that's... Yeah, it, I, I agree with that, too. And then I also think it, on that fan call and the kickoff call, another thing that you're that, that goes along with that book I'm reading right now um, that you're doing and doing really well is his whole his whole um, thought is stop focusing on the problem and focus on what you do want out of life. So by putting it out there, here's what I do want. Yeah, so You're painting that picture and you're not focusing on, okay, but here's why I'm here's why I'm overweight or here's why I failed at this or here's why I did that. That's in the past. You can't change yeah. that. Focus. Yeah. So stop. So stop putting your focus there. Stop yeah. Your brain power for that. A therapist. Therapist looks back, right? Ther therapy looks at your past and says why you are where you are. Where a coach says that's all fine. Let's go forward. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's what the 
you know, the coaches kind of say, listen, I understand. I get, I get why you, where you're, where you're at. We can dwell on that for a while if you'd like to, but let's, let's move on but forward. That fan you know? call is we, great because you're or, putting out there what you want, what you, yeah, you know. it is. It, it, you do they literally, they have to preface every statement by saying, I will. Yes. And, the, and when they say, I'll try, we say that's profanity. That's yeah. weak. Don't say that. <laughs> right. And they have to restate it. And this I, is a little mental exercise where we say to people, you know, whatever you do, don't picture the pink elephant behind you. Well, the moment we say that, everyone pictures a pink elephant, even though we said don't picture that. Yeah. That's where we explain to them, you know, the mind really can't represent a negation. When someone's saying, you know, I don't want to mess up, yeah. then they're wondering why they mess up. When yeah. they're saying, I hope I don't forget my keys, yeah. they're wondering why they forget their keys. They don't realize that the mind doesn't represent the negation. It actually represents the thing that you're actually saying. And it's almost as if you want that yeah. and you're drawing that to yourself. Yeah. So Amber, to your point, you know, the mind has to be actually really, really pushed yeah. to focus on what you're wanting, not what you're hoping won't happen. You know, in Ser Serrano, in child psychology, they'd say when you're trying to get redirect your kid to do something, you don't tell them what not to do. You know, <laughs> hey, stop being so loud or don't do this or don't do that. It's because your brain can't, pro a child's brain especially can't process the don't and then whatever the command is at the same time. So you, you try to tell them what to do instead of what not to do. Yeah. That's why my wife is always telling me to use my inside voice. Is that why? Yeah. Ronald, don't leave the house tonight. Don't leave the house tonight. Don't leave the house tonight. Don't, don't leave the house so it's quiet tonight. Don't do that. So <laughs> I know. I was thinking we one of the things that I do that's very interesting at the workshop, and I, I, I think that people, they come in saying, okay, let's learn about real estate investing. And every now and again, we get somebody pissed because they go, I want to learn how to hang kitchen cabinets. I'm like, you got the wrong place for that. That's not what we're going to do. We're going to talk about how to really build a business. And so I get people to agree up front. I say, what's the most important part of a house? And they say, well, the foundation. They eventually get around to saying foundation. I say, good. What's the most important part of your business? Mm. Around to say, well, the foundation? I'm like, right. And what is the foundation of your business? And they say, well, me, I go right. So, good. what happens to a foundation when it's when it's not good in a house? Does it crack right away? No, it cracks over time. They have a crack on the wall, and eventually mm -hmm. it will collapse if it's built on sand, built on a shaky foundation. I said, so we want to make your foundation strong. So let's work about you. And I, I go into right away saying, listen, let's you know how important are our thoughts? And just yeah. like we talked about, I say what you know. I think I say I always say think about everything around us. I say everything everything that we that we have. Look around your room. Every single thing is started with a thought. From the clothes you wear, the color, the fabric, to the material that you have, to the, and I always say, you know, I say everything from that to even you were a thought. I say, of course, <laughs> half, half of us were a thought and half of us, half of us involved tequila and some weird dancing. That's just what I said. So, but I get people laughing. I say they understand that it, it all starts with a thought. Yeah. Right? And I build the whole weekend on that. And it's all, we all go over the mechanics as well. But I show them, I say, I'm, I'm going to give you the mental tools as well as the mechanical tools. Because if, if you don't have the mental tools, you can't, you won't be able to navigate through the bad contract or the bad deal. The person that's trying to okay. take your money, the, the shifty other investor that's trying to take your deal, the, the, the fear that you're about to plunk down 50 grand or 100 grand or 300 grand on a house and that you're signing papers and you're borrowing money. And the, if you can't navigate that, you're done. And I'm sure you guys have the same thing with your clients. You're like... We have to get you through these things, or you're, or you're going to be stuck. Okay. I was just for you. Go ahead, Amber. No, you go ahead, Brooke. No, no, no. Go ahead. No, no, no you go ahead. <laughs> okay, I'll go ahead. I have to. I, have I was to, talking to you, Serrano. You were talking. No, no, no. Actually, actually, in full disclosure, in a few minutes, I'm going to be uh, uh, having a call that represents the biggest deal for us of the year. Congratulations. Just, yeah. Well, thank you. And I have to admit that, like. It's been so uh, yeah. powerful coming to this conversation because oh, it got me to even see that I was still pushing through levels of fear. So uh, I feel like mm. I just had a great coaching That's session. Awesome. Oh, That's great. Awesome. I really awesome. appreciate that. Yeah. I really That's appreciate it. fantastic. Well, that's yeah. awesome. Well, that's the, so tell me this. So tell people how they can find you. How can they find you? How can they get the book? How can they do all that stuff? Tell, tell people how they can find you. Uh, go to our website, thekellygroup.net. And Kelly is spelled K-E-L-L-E-Y, thekellygroup.net. And again, the book that we wrote is called The Game When Your Life in 90 Days. And people can even get a complimentary copy of the book. Again, the book appeared on Good Morning America. Uh, you know, it's currently the subject of a PBS documentary. 
Uh, and we look forward to seeing how they're able to apply this process to executing the uh, great instructions, the great kinds of actions that you know that people need to take to be able to achieve success, like the kind of success that you guys have had. Yeah. Well, this has just been fantastic. This has been great. I appreciate you guys being here. Everybody, uh, please, I hope you took a lot of notes. I know I have a whole page of notes here, so I've been taking lots of good notes uh-huh. in this I, whole I think, thing. So. I think it's really good to remember, too, that, you know, we're not even, you guys aren't even specifically in real estate, but how much can you learn from other people just success and, and success and failures and, you know, just, just everything. You guys have just been, it's been really enlightening, and I think our listeners are just going to love you guys. So from Amber and I, I don't even know what the deal you have working on, but I'm very excited for you because I know about I know about reaching big goals and dreams. I know what that feels like. I know exactly what it feels like. So I'm I'm uh, I'm pulling for you no matter what it is today, and I, I know that all of our listeners, hope it's probably, it'll be over by the time they hear this, but hopefully it's all... Yep. Well, let's say this. It's going to happen, right? It's going to happen. Thank it's going to be great. You, and I want to tell your son, that. I want to tell your son he inspired me. I think that that generation is actually, if we would stop invalidating um, all that they have efficiently figured <clears throat> out and deciding that makes them lazy, I think they're mentally on their game. So it may not require the same things we thought. And I, I really admire your son. I really, really do. I was listening like, I want to have lunch with Kobe or Koba or well, Dakota. 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 We can call him Koda. Yeah. But Dakota, Dakota yeah. see, half liver, whole liver. But with Dakota, <laughs> I think it would be so cool. Like he's super ins- at 21 to have that mindset, right? I So I wish him the best of luck too. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Star. You guys have been awesome. Thanks so much for Thanks being on our show today. Appreciate it. Take care. Thanks, guys. Thanks for right. having us. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Appreciate it.